Ever wondered why understanding incidents and prevalence matters in research? Well, let's take a moment to unravel these intriguing terms that play a central role in health research and beyond. Incidents and prevalence are like two sides of the same coin, yet they offer different perspectives. They are key measures used in epidemiology, the study of how often diseases occur in different groups of people and why. But their importance isn't confined to health research alone. From market research to social sciences, understanding the incidence and prevalence can offer valuable insights. So what's the fuss all about? Let's break it down. Imagine you're a detective trying to solve a puzzle. Incidence and prevalence are like your clues helping you understand the bigger picture. Incidence refers to the number of new cases of a condition, disease or event in a population during a specified period. It's like taking a snapshot at a particular moment in time. On the other hand, prevalence is a measure of all existing cases, both new and old, in a population at a specific time or over a certain period. Think of it as a panorama, capturing the entire scene, not just a single moment. Knowing the incidents can help us understand how quickly a disease is spreading or how often a particular event is occurring. Prevalence, meanwhile, can give us a sense of the overall burden of a disease or condition or the scale of an occurrence. Understanding these terms isn't just about learning definitions or memorizing facts, it's about gaining a deeper understanding of how things work, how patterns form, and how events unfold over time. It's about seeing beyond the surface and making sense of the world around us. Now that we've set the stage, let's delve deeper into what incidents and prevalence truly mean. So what exactly is incidence in the realm of research? Let's delve into this by envisioning a scenario. Imagine a small close-knit community living a peaceful life when suddenly they are hit by an outbreak of a new disease. The total number of people getting sick in this community over a specific period is what we refer to as incidence. In research, incidence is a crucial concept, particularly in epidemiology, which is the study of how often diseases occur in different groups of people and why incidence gives us the number of new cases of a disease or condition in a population over a certain period. So in our imagined community, if over the course of a year, 50 new cases of the disease are reported, then those 50 cases constitute the incidence for that year. Incidence is expressed as a rate often per thousand or per hundred thousand people to allow for comparisons between different populations and time periods. An important point to remember is that incidence is a measure of risk. It tells us how likely it is for someone in a certain population to develop a particular condition within a specified time period. Using our example, if the community had a thousand people and 50 new disease cases appear over a year, we would say the annual risk or incidence of the disease in that community is 50 per thousand. Incidence is valuable in research because it helps us understand the likelihood of contracting certain diseases or conditions. It aids in identifying patterns and trends and can be a significant factor in developing preventive measures and public health strategies. So the next time you hear about a sudden outbreak of a disease or a spike in the number of new cases of a condition, you'll know that researchers are keenly studying the incidence to understand the risk and find ways to mitigate it. That, in a nutshell, is what incidence is all about, tracking the number of new cases in a population over a certain period. Now let's shift gears and talk about prevalence. How does it differ from incidence? Prevalence is another essential measure in the world of epidemiology. It gives us a snapshot, a broad view of a disease or a condition within a specific population at a particular point in time. To understand prevalence better, let's use an example. Imagine a small town, let's call it Healthville. Healthville is known for its residents who live with a particular chronic illness. Now, if we want to measure the prevalence of this chronic illness in Healthville, we would count all the people living with that illness, regardless of when they were diagnosed. That's because prevalence encompasses both new and existing cases. So if there are 300 people in Healthville and 60 of them are living with the chronic illness, the prevalence would be 60 out of 300 or 20 percent. This figure represents the overall burden of this chronic illness in Healthville. Now you may ask, why is prevalence important? Prevalence helps us understand the overall impact of a disease or condition on a community. It helps in planning healthcare services, 
allocating resources and strategizing interventions. It gives us the bigger picture, while incidence focuses more on the new cases appearing within a specific time frame. However, it's important to remember that prevalence is not a static figure. It can change based on various factors, like the rate at which new cases appear, incidence, the duration of the disease, and the rate at which people recover or pass away. That's why public health officials and researchers constantly monitor prevalence rates. In summary, while incidence helps us understand the rate at which a disease is spreading, prevalence helps us grasp the total burden of a disease within a community. It's like looking at a forest. Incidence would be the new trees sprouting, while prevalence would be the total number of trees, both young and old. So, prevalence gives us a broader picture of a disease or condition in a population, including both new and existing cases. Y you might be thinking incidence and prevalence sound similar, so what's the difference? Well, let's dive into it. First off, incidence and prevalence are both crucial measures in epidemiology, the branch of medicine that deals with the incidence, distribution and possible control of diseases. They sound alike and they both involve counting cases of a disease or condition. However, the similarity ends there. Let's start with incidence. Incidence is all about new cases. It's a measure of risk, telling us how many new cases of a disease occur in a specific population over a specific period. Picture a community where no one has ever had chickenpox. If, over a year, 10 new cases pop up, then that's your incidence. 10 new cases in one year. Remember, we're only counting the new cases. On the other hand, prevalence is about the total number of cases, both old and new, at a given point in time. It's a measure of the overall disease burden. Going back to our chickenpox example, let's say at the start of the year, 20 people in the community already had chickenpox at some point in their lives. Then 10 new cases appear throughout the year. At the end of the year, the prevalence of chickenpox would be 30 cases, the original 20 plus the 10 new ones. In other words, incidence is like the speed at which new cases are appearing, while prevalence is like a snapshot of all the cases at a specific moment. Incidence is about the flow of new cases, and prevalence is about the stock of all cases. So, why does this matter? Well, understanding the difference between incidence and prevalence can help researchers and health professionals determine how a disease is spreading, who it's affecting, and how to control it. It's a bit like knowing whether to focus on stopping leaks in a boat, incidence, or bailing out the water already in the boat, prevalence. In essence, while incidence tells us about the risk of contracting a disease, prevalence tells us about the overall burden of the disease in a population. Let's wrap up what we've learned about incidence and prevalence in research. We began by defining incidence and prevalence, two critical terms used in research, particularly in epidemiology. Incidence refers to the number of new cases of a specific condition in a specific population within a set time frame. It's the measure of risk or the probability of an event occurring within a defined period. To illustrate this, we use the example of a fictional town where we calculated the incidence of flu cases over the winter months. We found that the incidence was the number of new flu cases divided by the total population at risk, those who hadn't had the flu at the start of the winter. On the other hand, prevalence is the total number of cases, both new and existing, of a specific condition in a population at a single point in time. It provides a snapshot of how widespread a condition is. We saw this in action with our example of the number of people in the same town who wear glasses. The prevalence was calculated as the total number of people wearing glasses divided by the total population. Then we dove into the differences between incidence and prevalence. Incidence is about new cases and time risk, while prevalence is about all cases at a specific point in time. Understanding these differences is crucial for interpreting research data correctly. We also discussed how these terms are used in different types of research. Incidence is often used in cohort studies and clinical trials, while prevalence is more common in cross-sectional studies. By understanding these concepts, you're better equipped to design, conduct and interpret research effectively. These terms help us understand the burden of disease, assess risk and guide decision-making in public health and clinical practice. Remember, understanding incidence and prevalence can greatly enhance the quality and value of your research. The next time you come across these terms, you'll know exactly what they mean.